Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. We're going to do something a little different today. We're going to take a trip back through nostalgia's lane. Back in the 1950s, the FCC introduced the novice class license. It had telegraphy privileges only on 80, 40, 15, and then on 10, it had both telegraphy and um, voice privileges, okay? Now, also it had some privileges for voice on 220. Uh, that's 1.25 centimeters. Now, that is the first license that I acquired. And I needed a transmitter and a receiver that would do Morse code. I picked up the Heathkit HW16, which is a college graduation present to me from my parents. I had a lot of fun with that radio. Well, now there were other approaches to doing it, even earlier in time. I picked mine up in the 70s. Uh, even earlier in the 50s, there was a company called Amico, and it produced a uh, little radio called the uh, AC1, which was a novice transmitter. Actually, it was a QRP transmitter. It only transmitted about uh, 7 or 8 watts. Well, they're still available on eBay. You can get them. They require uh, rehabilitation to get them uh, to where they work and so on. It's not a very good transmitter. It's chirpy and so on. Uh, you'll see more of that uh, when we get to the build and test phase. But as it turns out, someone has decided to make that transceiver available again. And you can buy it, the original tube type transceiver. Transmitter, it's just a transmitter, sorry, just a transmitter. I'm going to use a software-defined radio that I have here as the receiver, and uh, we'll learn a lot more about this radio as we go along. First, what I'd like to do is show you some charts that give you a little bit of history of the radio, and then uh, we'll go into the unboxing of all the various components, which will look strange and unique to uh, our eyes today. Now, for those of you who are my age or older, this is a trip down memory lane. Uh, for those of you who are young, this is major nostalgia because it is a transmitter that works only using vacuum tubes. There are no transistors, solid state devices, or anything like that in it. This is major retro, and you might find it an interesting project to build, and it will work if you have your technician general or extra license because the technician license picked up all those novice slots in addition to the other stuff that you can do on a VHF. So let's dig into the charts. Let's look at a few charts. This is the radio that we're talking about. It was a very common and popular radio back in the 1950s. And this radio is designed specifically for novices. It's crystal controlled. You can see the crystal sitting right here. Just two tubes. This is the coil form uh, where you uh, pick a band and build a coil for it, and 80 and 40 basically. Um, and this is where you connected the antenna. This was an advertisement for one of those uh, old ones. Um, it's the Amico transmitter. If you look up Amico today, you find a lot of different companies. American Metal Company or American Manufacturing and Equipment Corporation or something like that. But Amico back then was a ham radio outfit that made these little kits. $16.95 for the kit. However, if you wanted an extra coil, it was 50 cents. And oh, by the way, if you want the tubes, they're another $2.13. Okay, so now let's just go through a couple of the features here. Pi network output. Now, Pi network output, which is a standard output for tubes, means we can match this to most antennas without a, uh, an antenna tuner. Most, not all. 
Includes a heavy duty AC power supply well. Yeah, you gotta light the tubes and provide the high voltage 6V6 oscillator and 6X5 rectifier. Uh, there are no solid state components in here at all. It says 15 watts input. Back then, uh, the legal limitation on ham radio was 1000 watts input. Well, that's changed now. It's all in PEP, peak envelope power out. Okay, so we're probably going to expect half that at most on output. And yes, this is a CW only uh, transmitter. Okay, I plan to use it with little software defined uh, radio. So we'll see how it goes. It is crystal controlled only right there. Now note this thing right here. That's for a VFO, but they don't talk about the VFO here. Attractive gray hammerstone finish using the British spelling of gray with white lettering and red knobs. Well, mine came with black knobs, so there. Uh, the white lettering is just a little decal like you put on model airplanes. Simple and educational briefing instructions, I guess. Building instructions. The new Amico transmitter kit is an ideal unit for the beginner or novice who requires a reliable transmitter. Well, of course, that's the way they advertised in those days. It is a high quality rig. Why is it high quality? Because they say it is. It's a high quality rig containing a heavy duty transformer choke power supply. Well, the transformer itself is the choke. So it has a Pi section output circuit to work into any random length of antenna wire. No antenna tuner is necessary. Note that's true for most old tube rigs. Keying is clean and chirp free. Well, that's baloney. I can tell you right now this rig is going to chirp like crazy, but we'll see. Uh, I understand if you tune it up carefully, it doesn't chirp too much. We'll see. TVI suppression. TV is television interference suppression. Now, those suppressions, it says, have been included as well. Actually, it's the Pi output filter that uh, suppresses harmonics uh, going out. Kit is low in cost, that's true, simple to build and easy to operate. Units are complete with punched chassis, which is very important back then. A lot of people did not have the uh, wherewithal to punch tube holes and stuff into um, a chassis. Uh, hardware and instructions, okay? Now, um, the thing is 1695 back then or 1819, some odd dollars by the time you paid, this would be $20, $20 today is, I don't know, around 200, but this thing costs more than that. Now, this has been, these are still available, the original ones on eBay, and you can pay a horrendous price for them. So a guy by the name of Kosta Stojanov, KY6AA, uh, and, and now this comes from five years ago, almost, to, well, to the day, as a matter of fact. It's the 17th of April, 2022. We are members of the NE1LZ Radio Club in Skokie, Illinois, and we are selling the Amico AC1 Do-It-Yourself Kit. Now, the new Amico.com is our uh, website. My name is Costa KY6AA. The price of the Amico AC1 kit on eBay is $188.81. That is out of date. This is out of date. Okay, 1260 shipping and handling. We'll see. I'll show you in the next slide what it is today. To keep the price low, we had to order the chassis and the transformer in Bulgaria. Most of the cheap stuff, meaning resistors and so on, come from China, but we don't know anybody. I'm going to correct his English, which is a second language for him. We don't know anybody in China, so they have no connections there. They're just buying parts. Okay, this is today. If you go to this, the newamico.com, the newamico.com, okay, I capitalized this in here. It's a little easier to read than thenewamico.com. It's thenewamico.com. 
you get this. Now they've got great plans, or have had great plans, of producing a matching receiver, because Alinko had uh, Amico, 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 I gotta say Amico. I keep wanting to say Alinko, which is a very different company. Okay, so these are uh, replica kits of this very popular uh, Novice CW transmitter. Uh, back then, you often bought your transmitter and receiver separately, the AC1. Okay, uh, the built-in AC power supply uses now a 6X5GT rectifier tube in the oscillator 6V6GT tube, putting 5 to 7 watts of RF into the antenna feed line. Band switching is obtained by changing the plug-in coil. Exact transmitting frequency is determined by an FT243, which is a package type uh, for a quartz crystal. All our kits include mostly military grade parts made in Russia. Um, obviously this is changing right at the moment, but uh, <laughs> things change so fast. You will receive all the components needed in very detailed step-by-step -step instructions and drawings. So there's one kit, and this is the uh, kit, um, the AC-1, the replica of the original for the 40 meter band. Okay, um, $230.32 plus $12.80 shipping and handling. I think that's a little low on the shipping and handling because I think the the flat rate, the commercial flat rate for medium uh, priority mailbox is a little higher than that, but uh, they probably take it out of there. So anyway, and the click here to see more just gives you some pictures, okay, which I'll show you a few of. So here's your kit. Now you can get the AC1T, which is the one I got, okay. And this is the kit of the improved version for 80, 40, and 20 meter bands. Okay, 40 and 20 is where you find a lot of CW these days. Click to see more gives you some pictures. Like here's a picture of the completed uh, rig on off. And that turns on the 120 volts. One thing you want to be careful of with these vacuum tubes Turn them on, leave them on, and then when you're done, turn them off. Don't flick that switch back and forth because it will pop the filaments in those tubes faster than you can say boo. Now vacuum tubes, usually it's the filament that fails. And they're like light bulbs in that regard. Uh, if the, f the times that the filament fails most, or power on and power off. Okay, so if you're going to turn this on, leave it on until you are absolutely sure that you are done. Okay, because every time you power cycle the tube, that is what shortens the lives of the tube. Can these replacement tubes be obtained? Yes, they can. Here's your plate tuning and your antenna loading. Okay, they show the red, I got black knobs, I'm jealous. Okay, and the transmitter model. These things are all um, decals that have to be transferred on there. Okay, and then up over here is a little thing you connect the antenna to, if you want. Okay, now I want you to notice something protruding out of the back right here. That's actually an SO239. And that was not in the original radio. Uh, what was in the original radio uh, was just this little terminal strip, a ground into the antenna. It was designed to work into a long wire antenna. Well, it will work into more sophisticated antennas. And this down here is the wiring diagram. You can see they've, and this is looking at it from the bottom. Okay, so here's your key plug. Uh, and note that they have put in a new modern style key jack. Okay, that's nice. Rather than that old kind of banana plug type thing. But they've got that there if you want it. A real fuse. Okay, this wire here is a polarized plug. 
so they can attach the neutral side to ground. Um, you've got one little uh, holder here. Uh, your three tube sockets because um, one of these is actually a crystal holder. Okay, these are your two tubes. You'll wire those up. Note you've got some high voltage wiring in here and it shows you where the parts go. Now, they don't just hand you this diagram. There is a very detailed step-by-step -step, uh, method and you might mark them off on this diagram as well as in the step-by-step -step instructions. Now this right here is the coil form where the coil plugs in. And which coil you plug in determines the band it will operate on. Okay, 80 and 40 are pretty good. 20 is a stretch, so we'll see how that works out. Now, from here, we're already done looking at the charts. Let's open the box. So here is the box that came here. It's a medium flat rate box. Uh, it's heavy, it's over seven pounds, uh, which you would expect for an old, old radio like that, and it's got a lot of metal in it. Okay, it comes from 68 Incorporated in Lake Zurich, Illinois. All right, let's open it up. I don't know what's in here. I haven't opened it yet. Here is a piece of cardboard, looks like just cut to fit. Okay, and then this, I think, is the same thing, just to make sure that the thing fits down like this. Now here's something interesting that came in it. This is the Amico's version of a radio amateur logbook um, <laughs> approved by FCC for fixed and mobile use. Well I was back in ancient times when you had to do that and uh, this was the the things that went into the logbook. Um, the ARRL logbook was bigger, but this works just fine. has everything in it. That was back when you had to log everything, even calling CQ. Okay, so let's put that there. We'll take this out. Okay. Um, now, here is a pen. It says um, Amico AC1 www.thenewamico.com uh, from 73 from KY6AA, okay, and uh, it's, uh, I'm assuming, a, uh, yeah, a ballpoint pen in a nice little case. There is something in here. Oh, these are the decals. You can barely see that that's a decal, but it is. And these need to be transferred using the old-fashioned decal method of soaking these in water and putting these on. So the um, don't lose this. Okay, here's a little card from KY6AA showing the uh, radio what it will look like. Now this is the construction and operations manual for the kit. Oh, and it's down <clears throat> down to the Heath kit level. Okay, high voltages. This is a very important warning. There are high voltages in the transmitter. You need to be very careful when you put these things together. So, tells you all how to do it here. Okay, what's going to be where, and this tells you where to put the different uh, decals and so on. So that's very important. We won't lose it. Another spacer. Anything interesting? No? Another spacer and here is the kit okay and all the parts come in the kit here's some wire sort of a purple cloth in there 
more of these little things. This is the actual thing itself. Doesn't have any of the lettering on it because you have to put that on it. This is the front over here and it looks like one of the capacitors is already mounted. Um, we've got wire for winding coils. We've got um, a coil form. This determines what band it operates on. And we've got a power cord. Okay. It's a, a cord that is, uh, um, will only plug in one way so you get it connected to the right side of the circuit. Now, there's lots of packing in here. And one reason for all of that packing is this transformer right here. This is T1. T1 is very heavy. All the old boat anchors used linear power supplies. And these big, and believe me, this is most of the weight of the transceiver it, or transmitter. It's nearly solid copper inside. Okay, and this produces a multitude of voltages. There's the filament voltage, and then there's the high voltage. The filament voltage is probably about 6.3 ohms. And then here, the last of the things out, this capacitor is, I believe, actually mounted. Um, it's an old log type capacitor. Okay, and there will be another capacitor here. So this is how big the kit is, man. I can put my hand over most of the thing. That's quite interesting, okay? So we're going to have to mount all these parts. Note that we're going to end up having to scrape the paint off to make good contacts underneath. Now the other things that are very interesting more packing. They've got to have lots of packing. Okay, here is uh, an Amico tube box. We'll see what's in here. What is in here are actually all the little parts that come with the kit. This kit is probably the best packed kit I've ever seen. These are the RF chokes, the coils. There's all kinds of stuff in here and I'm not going to take it all out right now. We will when we actually build the kit. In this Amico, it's a beautifully new printed copy. It's got more parts in it. Okay, now you ask, well, where are the actual tubes? Well, well, here's one of those, or two of those uh, knobs, or chicken head knobs. I'll show you what that means when we put it together. This right here is, and I think these come from Bulgaria. Oh, it's an octal tube. That is an electron tube. Okay. I say octal. It has five pins, but it's missing three, so that would give it eight. It's got a test mark on it. And you can see just barely the writing on there. 65C. We'll see what that really is, okay? Because I think these tubes come from Bulgaria. So they may be using a Cyrillic alphabet. Uh, for that. A lot of the parts came from Russia back before things sort of closed down with them. See, here is another tube. And you want to be gentle with these tubes. They don't like nastiness. 
This one's got a black inside and it's marked as a 6QOC. Okay, and uh, this has got six pins on it and two pins missing, but it will go into an octal tube. Okay, we'll be very careful with these. It used to be you could run to the corner drugstore and get tubes, but not anymore. Is there anything else at the bottom of this? No, that's it. That's it. Okay, I'm going to kind of set things back inside until we actually build this. The kit itself is extremely simple to build. I've got to find out what this purple cloth is. It's between a red wire and a black wire. And it looks like a pad to go on the table, to put this on the table. There are holes here. I hope, well, no, there isn't a, uh, I didn't find a uh, bottom cover for this. There really should be a bottom cover. Just out of curiosity, let's take everything out of the box, including that very heavy transformer, and all the parts boxes, the tubes. There are no transistors in this thing, of course, since it was 1950s. Transistors were not readily commercially available. There is no bottom on this thing, which is a safety problem in my mind, but um, I guess in the interests of whatever, they might have done that. I am thinking that I may put a cardboard cover over this or something like that just to keep the odd finger from slipping into the box, you know, while you're handling it, or you, you go to pick it up and you go like this, and you've got fingers in the high voltage there, which can be very dangerous. So, um, this is the kind of kit you would get in the 50s. They expected you to be careful around high voltage. Uh, the ham radio training that we got back then was very oriented to high voltage training and high voltage safety. In fact, they talked about when working on a radio, be careful with it. And this thing, I'm just going to put it here, I think it'll be fine. And that's it for the unboxing. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, the next video, we're going to be constructing this thing. It's a fairly simple kit to put together, but the techniques for putting it together are quite different as there is not a single circuit board inside of this thing. It's what we used to call point-to-point -point wiring, and we'll have uh, some fun doing that in the next video. Be sure to like and subscribe. If you would like to help this channel uh, financially, you may certainly do so by going to decastlercom support. Also, don't forget to enter our monthly giveaway. Uh, it's uh, at uh, decastlercom giveaway. It's got uh, what's being given away this month and what will be uh, given away in uh, future months. So, until we next meet, 73.